Yo, what's going on guys? Johnny GB here bringing you guys week 6 of the ICBA. It is Monday the 1st of October or the 2nd? It might be the 1st. It is Monday, October 2nd. Today, well, not when I'm recording this, but the day you guys see the day... The day that you guys see this, it is now Monday, October 2nd, and this is officially the start of the second half of the season. Now, um, we did have a week break on uploads two weeks ago. That was so that we could break down our battles to where they were one week ahead of the uploads, just making it a little bit easier um, in terms of all the people creating the content for the videos to make sure they take time and edit their videos and such. Um, but we are taking on Jonah and the Great Lake Greninjas this week, and he does have a couple of transactions. He did end up dropping AG Slash and picking up that Ferramosa. You guys see the Talonflame is one of the bigger threats on his team. Um, does have, I think it's six, seven kills so far this season. Um, he has the Sand Core, which, I mean, it's an obvious brain because I have my Hail Core. Uh, but uh, in terms of actually prepping for this matchup, this was one of the more uh, interesting ones, simply because Tyranitar can be quite a few different sets versus my team, and actually, doesn't matter what set it is, it's going to put in a lot of work. Now, I'm not going to spoil it, but I was actually very surprised by the Tyranitar set he brought this week, um, because I thought a choice a choice banded Tyranitar, if you look at my team, pretty much just runs through me. My Dark Resist is Nine Tails, which gets blown back by physical attacks anyway, and Tyranitar can bring Stone Edge. Uh, my Rock Resist doesn't ex Well, it's Seismitoad. That's essentially my Rock Resist. Uh, but looking at the team, we have a Rindo Berry uh, Seismitoad Stealth Rock. Uh, pretty much the goal is let's get Stealth Rocks up pretty early in the game. Um... Talonflame can't really roost up freely anymore with the whale ga uh, Gale Wings nerf. So I do want to get rocks up. Uh, if he goes Tentacruel, I do have Pokemon for Tentacruel. I have Sand Slash that can essentially do a lot of work this game because he doesn't have a Sand Slash switch on his team. I get up the Swords Dance. I'm dealing damage to everything on his team. He doesn't have a safe switch in uh, for Alolan Sand Slash. Uh, Zapdos, we have Roost, Toxic, Volt Switch, and Defog. Uh, pretty much just a utility Zapdos this week. Uh, pretty much keep rocks off my side of the field because Ninetales doesn't want chip damage, neither does Entei. Um, Alolan Sand Slash, we have a Swords Dance setup sweeper to me. Um, it just fits the team very well. Uh, with Slush Rush, I'm adamant. 212 speed EVs. Uh, I do outspeed Ferramosa in the hail, so that is the goal. We have the Icy Rock Nine Tails to pair with it with quite a bit of bulk. Uh, his team's not overly fast, and the Mons that he does have that are overly fast are Mons that I don't have to worry about running max speed because they're going to outspeed me anyway. So stuff like the Pheromos and the Talonflame really just help me dial back my speed uh, EVs that I actually need uh, to help versus uh, other Pokemon on his team. Entei, I only have 28 speed EVs, and that's for max speed Jolly Gudra. Um, otherwise, I have 232 into my HP. So, I have a pretty bulky team, but it's an offensive bulky because his team's not overly fast. But we're going to get actually right into the battle now. Enough with this uh, four-minute intro here. We're going to get right into it. I'm, again, I said I'm going to lead Seismitoad, and that's pretty much what it was. Uh, I can lead Seismitoad. It has a good matchup versus everything on his team. And he's going to go with Eclipse, the Ferramosa, which is fine. Um, I don't have much to switch into it. I do have Zapdos in the back with the Rocky Helmet, uh, which I could have gone into. But again, it hinders my ability to actually get Stealth Rocks up. And that's pretty much what I'm going to do here. I get the Stealth Rocks up. So, if Tentacruel wants to come in, it's going to have to take that chip damage. And it doesn't have the best recovery. All it has is Black Sludge. That was one advantage of trying to get Hazards up versus his team is... His team doesn't have the best recovery unless it comes from items. I think he has an Avalug. That was about it in terms of... Pokemon that uh, had some sort of reliable recovery... Uh, but here, 
I figure the Power Whip is coming, um, but I don't need Seismitoad for anything else. I have Earth Power Sludge Wave on this thing, so there's not much that Seismitoad's going to do for me the rest of the battle. This actually does allow me to go into my Alolan Ninetales and set up an Aurora Veil. Now, there's nothing wrong with me going for Aurora Veil. He can go out to his Tyranitar, it's fine. He can go out to Tentacruel, it's fine. I want the Aurora Veil up. And I'm able to do that. I get the Aurora Veil up. His Tentacruel is now going to take a turn worth of Hail Chip damage. And now I can go out into my Alolan Sand Slash and pretty much just weaken everything on his team at this point. My, if Sand Slash comes in, he has no real solution for it. You're going to see the Rapid Spin here just to get the rocks off the field. That's fine. Uh, because all this allows me to do is click a free Earthquake. He has nothing that switches in to an Earthquake. Feromosa does not switch in. It still takes a chunk of damage. And what's really unfortunate here is I do end up getting the crit which knocks out the Tentacruel. It should not have killed. Uh, yes, I was adamant, but Sandslash only has base 100 attack. So, um, I was in a very bad position here. Now, I wasn't going to sack off Sandslash to a um, Brick Break or anything. So, I actually withdraw. Uh, well, I actually go for the Iron Head because I knew I outsped. And... I wanted to see what type of Tyranitar it was. If he goes for Stone Edge, which is probably the safest play for him, um, then I'm in actually a very good spot because I can't, uh, he can't really kill me with Stone Edge. And now I make the turn to actually go to Zapdos. Now I could have gone Zapdos or Entei here. That's something to point out is I had Entei in the back that could take a Flare Blitz a little bit better, but with Aurora Veil up, um, this is actually very good because now the Town Flame took Rocky Helmet, it took Sandstorm, it took Recoil. It pretty much just took half its health just there in that one hit, so it makes up for the Stealth Rock damage. Now that Aurora Veil is gone, uh, I can fire off a Volt Switch here to pretty much get back out into my Alolan Ninetales. Um, Gudra, again, I'm a Pokemon with no recovery, so getting that Toxic off is actually very important here. And. Now me being able to go for my Alolan Ninetales, get the hail up, works out perfectly in my favor. Now this turn, instead of actually setting up the Aurora Veil, I just click Moonblast here, simply because he can go Tyranitar and prevent me from actually setting up the hail, uh, setting up the Aurora Veil. Um, Oh no, that's later on the battle, so ignore my, ignore what I say here. I do get the Aurora Veil up. He does show the Flamethrower, so he is a mixed Gudra. Still not sure what kind of Gudra. Could be Assault Vested. Not really sure. I haven't really attacked it to see damage output uh, as far as what it did to me. Now, here he's actually going to withdraw his Gudra, and he will go out to Legend, which is his Tyranitar. On the turn that I do click Moonblast, now this will do a very decent amount of damage. It does about 35%. I mean, again, Sandstorm does boost the special defense of Rock-type Pokemon. So it does about 40%. I do get the special attack drop, uh, but he will show that he is a Leftovers Tyranitar. Now, I figured he might just click Stone Edge because he probably wants his Nine Tails gone. Instead, he actually goes for the Thunder Wave, and it surprises me because that hinders my Sand Slash's ability to actually end up sweeping him. I thought Thunder Wave was actually a very good move because, I mean, I do have some fast Pokemon on my team for Ninja, Lola Ninetales. So, the Thunder Wave is actually a very good play uh, prep on his part. So, so now my Alone and Sand Slash cannot actually take out. Um, his Feromosa as what I thought it would now that I'm paralyzed. Uh, here I just make the double out into Zapdos. I figure I don't want to risk uh, my Sand Slash on an Earthquake potentially or a Brick Break. So let me just go out into my Tyranitar, get some chip damage on the Tyranitar. 
Here he's actually going to go for the knee first, which is actually just another very interesting move. He's just going to get the Volt Switch here. Which, you know what, it's fine for me because I can actually click Volt Switch on my own and go second. As he does bring out the Stoutland. Now, I know I had to go Alolan Ninetales here. Simply because I want to prevent this thing from being a Sand Sweeper. So, I get the hail up. I'm, I have no idea what Stoutland's going to go for. I really expected probably return here. Uh, it just seems like the most logical play. So Aurora Veil's finally worn off. I go for the Moonblast, and this is where I should have gone for another Aurora Veil. Just to have that defense to help me. And he's going to show Giga Impact. Which will take out my Ninetales. So now that has me worried that... I have nothing to really protect myself. Uh, all this does is allow my Sand Slash to come in and get its second kill of the game. Uh, he has to recharge. I can just click Iron Head and down goes the Herdier. Sand Slash with two kills now. So this just allows the Feramosa to come in uh, and pick up essentially a free kill. Now I could have gone Zapdos, but I don't want Zapdos taking unnecessary damage. Uh, versus this Feramosa. So, again, it's just pretty much all I can do is sack off Sand Slash. Um, and down goes uh, another Mon on my team. But this allows me to go out to my Zapdos. Um, it can't kill me, even though it's at plus one attack. So... All I can do here is pretty much just Volt Switch, and, Zap uh, and Zapdos will pick up a kill here now off the Volt Switch, which is very good because, one, Talonflame's gone, so he's losing a couple threats on his team. He lost his Sand Sweeper, uh, he lost his Talonflame, so I felt like I was in a very good position here to go Greninja. Now this is a Spikes, uh, it's a Spikes physically offensive Greninja with the ICMZ for the Gudra. So here comes the Feramosa, and I'm going to actually go for Shadow Sneak. I was really hoping he would try and bait for the uh, high jump kick. Instead, he just clicks U-turn. So me trying to really bait him into going for the high jump kick did not work as planned, as he's just going to go out to his Gudra. But at this point, I'm like, perfect. I can show off the ICMZ, the Sub-Zero Slammer. Um, I can go for the Sub-Zero Slammer, take out this Gudra. I mean, it didn't really need to be this weekend. I could have clicked Ice Punch and picked up the kill, but I have the Z-Move. Why not show it? And we are going to go for the Sub-Zero Slammer. I did have Ice Punch on this Greninja. Um, but this will take out the uh, Gudra at this point. As I've actually never seen the... I never saw the animation for Sub-Zero Sub Slammer until... Uh, we got to this point, and down goes Gudra, so now I'm in a very good position here to pick up a win. Here he's just going to go with Clips, I figured that would be the most simple thing for him to do, so I bring out my, I bring back my Greninja at this point, and I just go into my Zapdos, because I need some Rocky Helmet damage onto this Feramosa, and that's exactly what is going on. He's going to take the Rocky Helmet damage. So now he's pretty much in range of another Shadow Sneak. That's all I needed is I just needed his Feramosa in range of another Shadow Sneak. Now, this next turn, um, judging based on his Tyranitar having Thunder Wave and such, uh, I figured that he had... Uh, quite a bit of defense on his Tyranitar, so I just go for the Roost here, as he is going to go for the sto uh, Stealth Rocks, which I'm like, you know what, maybe I could potentially pressure stall this Tyranitar, depending on its moveset, uh, if it has Stone Edge, if it has Earthquake, uh, if he has Stone Edge, I can just pressure stall him for a little bit, uh, but I know I probably still need a little bit of chip damage on the Feramosa to ensure that Thunder Wave kills. 
Now I do have Entei in the back, it has extreme speed, so extreme speed will take it out. Uh, here goes for the Stone Edge. It's not going to kill the Zapdos, uh, but it's going to do a hell of a lot of damage to my Zapdos. But it does allow me to just roost up this turn uh, and take neutral damage from the Stone Edge, which is what I need. I, ne I just need it to waste Stone Edges. I need uh, my Zapdos to be at decent health to take on the, uh, the Pheromosa. So these next few turns is mostly setting myself up in a position to where Zapdos is free to come in, deal with Pheromosa. And Tyranitar now taking the Rocky Helmet damage. I was hoping that he Dragon Tailed me into Greninja. That was not the case, unfortunately, because of... Um, it just brought me out into my Entei. Now, I'm Choice Banded, so I figure I can just go for Iron Head. Um, I figured that, you know what, Iron Head, Choice Banded should actually deal a good amount of damage to this Tyranitar and potentially kill it. But this Tyranitar is bulkier than I thought. And unfortunately for him, I do get the flinch, which is actually very important because um, I would have to. Uh, uh, he would have ended up killing my Entei had he connected the Stone Edge. He connects the Stone Edge, then my Entei um, ends up dying, and we're in a completely different position here. Both died, so. I do go out to my Zapdos. I am going to take the 25% to rocks. And pretty much it's going to be uh, having this Pheromosa again just take more chip damage uh, than it needs to from the Rocky Helmet. So now it's 100% in range of Shadow Sneak, which just allows me to go into my Greninja. Or actually just go out into Entei, have Entei pick up a kill with the extreme speed, and we will pick up a 2 0 win. Now, sorry for the. Uh, mess up on commentary there. Um, so we're going to take Stealth Rock damage, and we are just going to click the extreme speed. Uh, priority was very key uh, for this Pheromosa. It's not very bulky, so that Greninja um, Shadow Sneak was very important. I think it had a chance to kill uh, based on where the Pheromosa was at uh, after that first batch of uh, Rocky Helmet damage. Uh, but we now advance to 5-1. and one. Unfortunate that the Iron Head Flinch uh, ended up determining the outcome of uh, that battle. Uh, it was really close in terms of how well we really prep for each other and really trying to deal with each other's weather. Um, that was something that I wasn't really prepared for was that defensive Tyranitar. Uh, I was expecting something more offensive, and it actually threw me a curveball there and affected my Sand Slash because Paralyzed Sand Slash didn't outspeed anything on his team, which hurt me a lot. So, we now are 5-1. and one. I'm not sure on my Week 7 opponent uh, yet, um, but we are starting to hit a nice high point. We are bounced back after that loss last week. Uh, and we are looking to go to 6-1 and one next week. So if you guys enjoyed this Week 6 ICBA battle, go ahead and leave a like down on the video, comment your guys' support, and subscribe to the channel for more Pokemon videos. But with all that being said, guys, I'm Johnny GB, and I'm out.